Greetings. It is I, the Great One himself, Seneca Libertarian Society, CYNLIBSOC.com on the interwebs. Got some CLSology here for you with an anarchy moment. There's so much. Oh, there's so much. There's so much I want to talk about. Oh. You know, if only I had more time in the day. If only I had more time. When I was your age, when days had 26 hours instead of 24. But then them goddamn Republicans got elected. They took our... All right, anyway. <sighs> we fucking talk about what I want to talk about. I could fucking talk about what I want to talk about instead of trying to make stupid jokes that you've all heard a thousand times. When I was your age, I'd only heard that when I was your age joke a thousand times, you little whippersnapper. Anyway, all right. I saw this article, came through my Twitter feed a while back. Springfield, I don't know Springfield where. Springfield somewhere, I don't give a shit. Let me read this to you. <sighs> Nearly one out of every five Springfield students is now a minority but the possibility that those students will have a teacher or another adult in the building who looks like them is fairly slim. Only 200 or 5% of all Springfield public school teacher, schools, teachers, and staff members are minorities. Quote, you could, you, God, can't read, fuck. Quote, you have students who could possibly go most of their career, K through 12, without possibly having a teacher of color until college, and possibly not in college, depending on where they go, close quote, said Lawrence Anderson, the district's manager of diversity and inclusion. Ah, yes, now there's a job for somebody who could never get a job in the free market. There's a job for somebody who has a worthless college diploma in math avoidance with a minor in hyphenated studies. He is the manager of diversity and inclusion. Now, what does this say about? Society. What does this say about those who have created this. All right. This is a statist school. This is a school run by the state where by their own admission only 5% of the teachers there are minorities. Okay. So how are we going to fix this problem? Well, we're going to fix this problem by, of course, giving minorities more money for college and blah, 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 blah. What we're not going to do is we're not going to think about the fact that this school is run by the state. It's run by the government. The people who work there were chosen by people who work for the government. People who work for the government decide who lives and who dies. They decide where we go to war. They decide what the taxes are. They decide what the regulations are. They decide what the ordinances are. These people are, in the eyes of the slave masses, gods. People who work for the government get to make decisions that affect the lives of everybody else around them. So if people, in fact, if people who work for the government are, in fact, the gods that the slaves believe they are, should we really be questioning the decision that the people who work for the government have made at this public school system that only 5% of the people there are minorities? Next up, this is another beautiful example of the cult of diversity and how the way it's played out reveals what left-wing statists really believe. Because, of course, there are no right-wing statists who give a shit about this. This is purely the domain of left-wing statists. So, first of all, left-wing statists believe that the students need minority teachers in order, for, for whatever reason. I don't even know what reason this is. The point, the students cannot learn 
from a person who doesn't have the same, same skin color they do. Now, of course, as I've said a gazillion times before, affirmative action and diversity and all this stuff is, of course, judging people by their skin color, making assumptions about them based on their skin color, not simply giving people jobs teaching in this public school because of their skin color, but also making the assumption that the children, because they have a certain skin color, need to see people of the same skin color in the school. All of this is assumptions made about other people based on skin color. But what's really interesting is the cult of diversity in the school system as illustrated here is all about skin color. Well, there's only 5% of the teachers are minorities. Here's a question. What percentage of the teachers are men versus, of course, what percentage of these students are men? So if it's important in the public school for children with dark skin to see teachers with dark skin, otherwise they're going to somehow be stunted for life or some shit, which, I mean, again, is insulting to the children. The idea that the children, well, I mean, public, anyway, I could go, you don't learn anything in public schools anyhow, but the idea that children can't learn things unless the person teaching them has the same skin color is fairly insulting. But then again, it's statism. It's all insulting. All right. What about the boys? If black children can only learn from black teachers, and if brown children have to learn from brown teachers, and yellow children <clears throat> have to learn from yellow teachers, well, don't male children need to learn from male teachers? Well, no, of course not, because you see, we don't give a shit about the boys. In fact, the left-wing statists want the boys to grow up to be as feminized as possible. The last thing we want is for the boys to have male role models in their life. And that's the excuse the left-wing states will give it by the will. But we need minority teachers so that the minority children have role models. Because, of course, the children can't find role models in their parents because their parents are just a bunch of fucking breeders who have no parenting skill. That's why their children are in public school. If you know, if, I mean, why in the fuck would you send your children to public school unless you're a fucking idiot? And, of course, the fact that the president of the United States, our top slave master has black skin. That's not good enough. That's not enough of a role model. So that's why, that's going to be the excuse that the left-wing statists use. Well, we've got to have more diversity among teachers for role models. The children need role models that have the same color skin they do. And this is not to say there's anything wrong with role models, nor is there anything wrong with having role models that have the same color skin. It is to say that when you're hiring decisions, are based on skin color, not on competency. That's how you end up with public schools. That's how you end up with failure. That's how you end up with an enslaved population who worships the state. So where is the argument that the male children need male role models? Well, you're not going to hear that argument. You know why? Because patriarchy. Because, you see, women are so oppressed. I mean, for example, women are pushed by men. Men actually force women to get these cushy teaching jobs where they get off work every day at 3.30 and they don't work for three months during the summer and they have children asking permission to go to the bathroom and therefore the teachers control children's bodies and where the teachers conform to very low standards and where the teachers basically do nothing but fuck up children and get paid your tax money for it. See, that's because of the patriarchy. Because women are forced to do that by men. 
Because you see, men control the entire planet. For example, the other day, here in the People's Republic of Fort Collins, we have this thing once a month in the summer. It's called the French Nest. It's this outdoor market. So I go there every now and then because there's chicks there and it's a good place to meet girls. And as I'm walking through there the last time, I'm looking around at all the tents and all the stuff and there's like furniture and jewelry and little knickknackies and art and you know cute baby clothing and all this other stuff. And I'm looking around and there's nothing there for men. It's like Stefan Molyneux has talked about. If you go to a shopping mall and you walk in the shopping mall, you'll see a couple of stores that have men's stuff. Like There's the video game store or whatever. And you'll see like maybe a bookstore. Okay, but then other than that, every other store in the shopping mall caters to women. Women's clothes, baby clothes, furniture, greeting cards, all of this shit that appeals only to women. So I'm at the French Ness and I'm looking around and it occurs to me every fucking tent there has a woman in it. There's a couple of men in there running the tents also, but every fucking tent had at least one woman in it and most of them were only women. Most of them were one woman. So it's a bunch of women selling shit to other women that only women would want. And why is that? Well, it's because patriarchy. Because Republicans force those women to manufacture that clothing or buy and refinish that furniture or make those little knickknackies and then go out there and sell that stuff to other women. And of course, the women buying this, Republicans and the patriarchs are forcing those women to buy that stuff. Just like the patriarchy forces shopping malls to fill themselves with stores that cater to women. And of course, the fact that women have all this money to go in these stores and go to the French Nest and buy all of this shit, well, that's also the patriarchy. See, the patriarchy, I and the 17 other heterosexual white men in the United States who work for a living, we're the patriarchy. We all get together and we force women to go out and buy this stuff with money they receive from welfare or alimony or child support or from their husbands having jobs. Now, of course, some women have jobs because of the patriarchy. This friend of mine, she, she did everything the feminist told her to do. Everything. She's kind of dumpy looking physically. She's overweight, although I'll give her credit, she's doing something about that. She has hair on her upper lip. She went to college. She went in debt to go to college. She has a worthless degree. She can't get a job in her industry. She's on her third job basically working in a cubicle. And she hates it. And why does she hate her job? Why does she have all of this debt? Why is she so unhappy? And she's massively unhappy with this job. And of course, she's not putting any effort at all into starting her own business, finding another job, not working in a cubicle. And all of her cubicle jobs have been working for colleges, which are controlled to a large extent by feminists. Feminism runs rampant on college campuses. All of her jobs that she, is ha that she has hated have been at colleges working for the government in a feminist dominated culture with loads and loads of sexual harassment training and diversity and political correctness. She has done everything exactly the way the feministatists have told her to do everything. She's gone into debt. She's gotten the college diploma. She's working for the government. She goes to diversity training. And she's unhappy as hell. You know why she's unhappy? Well, of course, because of the patriarchy. You see, the beautiful thing about being a feministatist is that you're not responsible for 
anything that happens to you, no matter what happens, it's always the patriarchy. <laughs>